20 seconds to the log. Okay, let's try it. Okay, do we have audio? Please let us know if you can hear us now. Can hear now. Okay. Oh, thank you. Sorry, we've had some technical difficulties, but let's get back to the very beginning. So we had... Uh, and thank you for being patient with us. I, I see many of you stood with us, and I appreciate that. I All right. know where I'm supposed to be looking. <laughs> Jillian Goldrich, no audio. All right. Uh, so hello, Donna. Hello, Linda. Hello, Ethel. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Carolyn Noller. Hello, Helen Solenberger. Hello, Susan Lucas. And Ethel again. Beverly, Christy Demeray, Jillian Goldrich, Pamela Rose Atkins. Says hello, Paulette and Paul. Uh, Helen Solenberger says hi, Ethel and Judy Rondo Snitkin. Judy Rondo Snitkin is watching. Mary Jane O'Malley, no audio. <laughs> we passed that. All right, part. <laughs> so you know what? We're going to fast forward to the very end and. Oop, oh. Okay. Okay. How about now? Let's see what we've got. I did a quick change during the break. Do we have audio? Okay. So um, if we have audio, let us know. Let us know if you don't hear us because today is getting frustrating and there's not much we can do about it when things like this happen. 
Okay, we've got a thumbs up. Okay, cool. Yes, we have audio. So let's let's chat a little bit about um, Tim Casal is on. Okay, hi Tim. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but apparently Paul knows who you are. So we're going to talk a little bit about this this Patriot game, Charlotte. You know, I finally got mine off the needles. Up, oh, it looks like I need to do a little bit of trim work there. Which let's talk a little bit about finishing our work. You know, when we weave in our ends that makes a giant difference in the way our garment is finished. So I can see right here. And sometimes after you finish weaving your ends in, you and you, and you let it sit for a little bit, uh, you find some little frizzies coming out. And I remember talking about uh, the, the lady where my mom used to work, her name was Ruthie, and she was the last person who got the garment before it was uh, pressed and put in plastic bags for shipping out. And her job was to make sure every piece of thread was off that garment so that it was perfect. So I'm a little bit of a stickler for that. Blocking, number one, biggest thing you wanna do is block. I was I had some uh, customers uh, today, come today to pick up their yarn and they were talking about, is it really necessary to block my projects? I don't usually block them. And one lady was saying that she actually had her um, a shawl laying out on her sofa because that was how she blocked it like over the back of the sofa and um, it, it doesn't really that doesn't block it so we want to make sure that we use that um, well I recommend soap wash which I think is fabulous because you don't have to rinse it out and you can find our video on blocking techniques um, right there on Nitty Gritty Yarn Girls YouTube channel so you can find that in find out about how, you know, exactly how we'll do our blocking. But the thing that I wanted to point out on this shawl, as I finally got a chance to make my very own, and this is a, it's a shawlette. I mean, it's nothing, it's not big. It's just a fun little piece. And um, it seems to be a good time of year for this shawl. In fact, it's been very popular. But there were some questions about the stars and carrying the yarn with the stars. So when I made my shawl, I purposely did this in the beginning because the pattern tells you to knit three or knit however many here and then knit one one white stitch and then knit five blue and one white and if we carry our yarn across those five blue stitches you can see we wind up with that long trail of yarn which is a and not very attractive should your yarn should your shawl flip over but B, it also gives you the opportunity for snags and catches, and we don't want to do that. So um, what we wanted to do is more like what you see up here. And you can see here, I, I carried the yarn across the five stitches, but I wrapped it along the way. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you in um, using some scrap yarn here. and just to give you an idea of how that works. Lila Foster says, so thrilled to be able to join tonight. Well, thanks, Lila. We're glad you're here. We've got a thumbs up from Ethel May Potter. Ethel, is it your first time on our show? I think it might be. I don't seem to remember your name. So, let me grab my... And my... Tim Casal is my friend from high school. Oh, well, hi, <laughs> Tim. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Okay, so I'm going to join my red yarn onto my gold here. Oh, Susan Lucas says, when you get audio back, can you show that des descent cowl again? I sure will. I will be happy to show it to you before the show is, before we're done for the day. Okay. So here we go. Now, if you can take a peek here, Paul. Yes, I Ethel joined... said it's her first time. Oh, excellent. Well, welcome, Ethel. We hope you enjoy it. We apologize for the little technical difficulty there. So first here, when I joined my new yarn, um, let me show you how I do that. I'm going to join it with the first stitch here. Okay, so, oopsie, let me grab that stitch back out. Okay, so I'm going to join my new color. And I think I've demonstrated this before, but we're going to do it again just so that you can see how I work it. I hold my, my old color in back. And I just, I've seen this done several ways. I just lay my new color over my back needle as if it was the, the, the other color and I knit my stitch. When I go to my second stitch, 
I insert my needle and then I take the ends of, I take my, the end of my new yarn and the tail of my old yarn and I wrap those around the back to secure them and then do my second stitch. And then depending on what I'm doing, I might do that one more time. And this helps with weaving in as well. So now here we go. I've got three stitches in. So now I'm going to say I have to, I'm going to in, I'm going to insert. I have to knit a yellow stitch. So now I'm going to take my yellow yarn. I'm going to wrap it in front of my red and knit my stitch. And then I'm going to do one more yellow. And now I've got to go back to red. So I'm going to take my red and I have to knit, let's say five stitches with red. So I'm going to do one, two. And because I know I'm going to have to pick up yellow later on, I'm now going to take my yellow. I'm going to wrap it over the red to carry it along. And I'm going to knit two more reds. And now I'm going to carry my yellow up again, go under and over the red. And then knit with my red one more stitch. Now, when it's time for me to knit my two yellows, my yellow yarn is right here where I need it. I'm going to take my yellow, go over the red. Now, you want to keep going in the same direction. You don't want to cause a hole in your knitting by going under or not crossing your when you cross your yarns over see now how nice and neat that is when you cross your yarns over you get that nice straight line all the way across rather than having this long float in the back no chance of snags okay so now i'm going to go back to my red i'm going to take my red yarn i'm going to cross it over the top of the yellow. I'm going to knit five, I knit two, then I'm going to bring my yellow, cross it over so it's there when I need it later, knit two more, bring it over, and then knit one. So unlike mosaic knitting, where you're you're slipping and knitting and slipping and knitting, and your yarns are just only going over those couple of stitches, um, it, for example, in the in the distant cowl, it's a slip it's a slip one knit one slip one knit one. So your other your the yarn that you're not using in between is always right there, right next to you, as you can see. So so slip stitching is a little different than carrying that yarn and then of course you know there's there's stranded color work where you have several different colors in sections and you'll need to use bobbins so that you don't carry that yarn all the way around and you want to make sure when you're carrying yarn for for color work whether it's stranded or mosaic you don't pull the yarn keep it nice and loose i've got to, i have to remind myself because i tend to knit a little tight so I've got to always remind myself when I'm knitting with more than one color to keep my yarns nice and loose, keep my stitches nice and loose so that when I come back around again, I can, I, I don't have any problem getting my stitches where they need to go. Ellen Mae Potter, heart, thumbs up and blushing emojis. <laughs> Anna Calfay and Munford, hi, triple exclamation point. Kathy Stoddard, momentarily lost video, but it's back now. And Linda Hardiger, yay, finally shared to my page. Evening, all. <laughs> good evening, good evening. Thank you, Linda Hardiger. We will make sure that we make a note that you share to your page. And um, remember, when you share Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl, we share the love. So um, next week on our show, in fact, let's do some drawings for some, uh, for some shares. We've got names going in the bucket down there. And just as a reminder, if we don't pick your name one week, we keep your name in for the following week. Yep, you are there, and you can you can win more than once. So there, therefore, the more you share, the more chances you have. So we got this now, folks. We got this um, carrying that yarn. We want to be sure that after a couple of stitches, 
across the yellow over the top of the red. You can see that from the back this time. Oops, see, with nimble fingers there. And knit a few more with the red. I wanted to show them the back, honey. Oh. <laughs> you were in the right place. Alrighty. See how I crossed that over? And then I knit my one more. When I'm ready for my yellow to cross over. Now, does this get a little fiddly? You can see what's happening here. You see that little, little twist? At the end of your row, you can straighten that out. You know, I because you're carrying those stitches all the way across, it's going to tend to get a little uh, twisted. So twisted stitches, it happens all the time, right? Anissa shared, hope you had a nice vacation. Triple we exclamation point. did. And we Kathy did. Stoddard shared also. All right, good. Now that's great because if I can't, see, sometimes you have your privacy settings set where we can't see that you exactly who's sharing it. So if you let us know that you shared it, we'll make sure we get your name in that in the bucket for next week. Um, speaking of next week, um, we've got a few things coming up next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and I'll announce this on the on our page so that you can see it and on Instagram as well. Uh, Thursday through Sunday, we have Vogue Knitting Live again, and we've got several different times that we're on. I, I'm trying all different times to see if I can reach folks all over the country and all over the world, because folks all over the world go to Vogue Knitting Live now that it is virtual. So um, so we've got a couple of different times that we'll share with you. They're all, all the times are Eastern this week or, or this month. So I will get those posted on the website. So that's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And we've got some new some new yarns and some new uh, projects that have come in for that show as well. And then on Monday, that I believe is the 12th, we have our Mirasol trunk show. And we've got some fabulous new yarns from Mirasol as, long, as well as some new patterns. So, and new colors in, in the Yusha. This, this yarn right here, it's that chainette. Um, this, what is the, the fiber content of Yusha? I just... It's, I love knitting with it. It's just such, I love the chain nets. There are lots of fun to knit with. This is a wool and polyamide, 90% wool, 98% wool, 2% polyamide. And I get some brand new colors in this and some fun patterns. So um, keep an eye out for that. And then some new yarns by Mirasol as well. Um, so fun things coming up. Oh, and Whitney Terrell will be here to do our truck show announcing for us so she'll be talking with us about all the new yarns and all the new colors that we have uh coming in from mirasol and then the week after that or a couple weeks after that we've got another another trunk show we've got jody long's trunk shows so uh just to give you an idea while we were away we went away for a few days this week and every day another box was delivered with more yarns. So um, you might remember on last week's show, um, who do we have on last week? Oh, yes, when Jeff Denneke was talking about um, the yarns being delayed and, and you know, runs ha having issues trying to get all the, all the pieces together so that they could actually manufacture the yarns and then get them shipped. So now it looks like they're beginning to come in and I'm uh, really excited about that. But it's a little bit of an overflow right now. So. Jillian Goldrich shared too. Ethel May Potter, Helen Solenberger shared with me. Thanks, Helen. <laughs> Smiley emoji. <laughs> Helen Solenberger, you are welcome and you, and you will really blank this show. Paulette and her hubby game show announcer, Paul. <laughs> Susan Lucas, when is the trunk show? Trunk show is Monday. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at my calendar. Excuse me for one moment, please. Please stand by while we summon the calendar. Da, 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 da. Calendar, calendar. I have that new calendar thing on my phone. The trunk show is, is Monday, October 12th. That is the Mirasol trunk show. And then the Thursday through Sunday before that, our Vogue Knitting Live days, and I'll post those days on the calendar. So, all righty. I wanted to, someone wanted to see the distant cowl again. So let me just, I'm gonna show you the picture of it. 
This is very interesting because the pattern calls for a DK weight yarn. Um, personally, I think you can make this pattern in any weight you want. Maybe not super bulky, but anything else would, would definitely work with it. So I decided I was going to make mine. I'm knitting mine in um, using Silk Garden. Let me just, because I just love the variety of colors. So you'll, you'll want to find one solid or tonal. And I'm pulling that so that you can see the polka dots because once this is blocked, you'll be able to see that they will fall just beautifully. Susan Lucas says, thanks. Oh, you're welcome. So I'm using, as I said, I'm using Silk Garden for this and Silk Garden Solo. And these are the two colors that I chose. Um, no, is that it? Let me see something. It's so funny the way they wind the yarn sometimes. You can't tell. Yeah, those are the same colors. They're just wound differently. And so I wanted some real stark difference. Sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll pull a color that's in the variegated or striped in with the tonal. Um, and, but this time I decided I wanted something totally different because I really think that as you get down here, and you get to the bejeweled section, you're gonna really wanna see that the distinct difference in there. But I thought what I'd do with this is show you some other combinations that I think will work very nicely. So, you know, here, these are all the silk gardens, all the different colors, and you can find all the silk gardens on our website and silk garden solo. And for that project using this yarn, you would need two skeins of, of each, two skeins of the solid, two skeins of your variegated or your striped. Um, any of these yarns up here will work beautifully. The Rainbow Beach. Helen Solenberger says, gorgeous. Carolyn Noller shared with all my friends. Thank you. So the um, Rainbow Beach would work beautifully with any of the Gadifra yarns here. Uh, you know, if you were walking into our studio or, or into our, our yarn shop, what I would do is walk you through and show you all the options that you could have for something like this. And so you could do it in a in Silk Garden sock. And look at these gorgeous colors you have here in, in the sock yarns and then in the solids. So the Silk Garden sock, sock and the Silk Garden sock solo. Say that three times fast. Um, another thing I think works really nicely with that is you can use something like this for your variegated. And then use something like that for your solid. So lots of options. There are Which so many. Which yarn is that? Um, this one, this is Nuna. This is by Mirasol. And then this is um, KFI Indulgence Sport, hand-painted. These work really nicely together. So if, you know, if, if this is a shawl of a cowl that interests you, please contact me. You can, you can get to me through our website, through our Contact Us form. You can call me at 203-856-6755, or you can email me at paulette at nittygrittyyarngirl.com. And I'm happy to walk you through the studio as I do with anyone else who is interested in yarns from us. Also, oh, here's another great combination um, suggestion for yarn. You can use any of the Patagonias and what I thought when I was doing this yesterday, I thought, how fun would this be to do Patagonia and mix it with Uluru? Just so pretty. You know, any of the any of the colors, and we have several colors here. And look at that. You can mix that with a green, with the grays. There's just so much to do here. Look at that. If you like the falls, the browns and the golds, really pretty. And then there's another very lovely combination that you can work. And again, you can pay, you can be as, as um, monochromatic or as 
diverse as you want in your colors or yes, your contrasts. So, you know, be creative with this and I'm going to get some, some projects up on the website for you. But in the meantime, like I say, if you want to uh, give us a call and if you saw something that you like here today, uh, I'm more than happy to put that together for you and uh, price it out for you. And so this is, you know, it doesn't need to be a very expensive um, project. It can just, cer it certainly will be striking no matter how you do it. And I think I want to do one of these. Look at that. Look at this. How pretty is that? Just really, really very nice. So that shawl caught my eye. The cowl caught my eye. And I just had to get it out there for you. Um, for those of you folks who have ordered or pre-ordered kits from the Silk Garden Trunk Show, the Silk Garden is is starting to come in. Um, I know Tina, if Tina is on the, Tina Lonergan, if you're on the show tonight, we have um, the Oku and the color that you ordered is not here just yet. They're expecting that one to come in mid-October is what they're saying. So patience, and we appreciate all your patience with uh, getting the colors in. So don't be afraid to pre-order. The yarns are, as I said, the yarns are coming in by the day right now. And we're, you know, we're able to fill orders as they come in. So if you see something that says pre-order on the website, um, trust that, that your, those yarns will be coming in. So are, are there any other questions, Paul, that we have right now? Nope, uh, we're I'm, doing good. Okay, good. Are we? I we're think... going to stay on over a little bit because we had some interruptions. Okay, all right. Well, that's fine. So then um, what I will do is, you know what? If we're going to stay over, I'm going to draw a name. Whoa. You know what? Because you know why? Because it's my show. And because I can. So, um, and we'll draw again next week and add all the new names to it for next week. Tell them what they're going to win, Paula. Oh, what are they going to win? Well, I've got lots of yarn here that I have. Um, do you want me to go grab one? Absolutely. Okay, then you just wait one. Quick... Please stand by. The anticipation is mounting. <laughs> there are many names here. Who's going to win? That's the big question of the day. Do we have anyone that would like to win? Oh, I have a lovely yarn. I have a skein of Beatrix. Whoa. Beatrix is a brand new yarn. If you missed our, our, um, our trunk show a couple of weeks ago, Beatrix is a brand new yarn by Juniper Moon Farm. And it is a 54% extra fine merino wool. 30% Angora and 16% nylon. This is a bulky weight yarn. And as a matter of fact, Pamela Rose Atkins just knitted up a sample for the shop using two skeins of this, of, of Beatrix. And we are going to draw a winner for a skein of Beatrix. Hold on a second. We've got some people chiming in. Anna Maria Milani says me. <laughs> Kathy Stoddard says for sure. Linda Hardiger, me, Helen Solenberger, pick me, and Pamela Rose Atkins, Beatrix is wonderful. Yeah, I know you really did enjoy working with that, didn't you? All right, Paul. All right, who wants the announcer to pick the name? <laughs> me. <laughs> All right, I... all of us would love to win. All righty, here we go. Round and round she goes. Where she stops, nobody knows. But there's one winner for sure. And we have that winner picked now. Oh, no. It's Anna Mumford. Anna Mumford, <laughs> congratulations. You're today's lucky winner. There you go, Anna. You she just... had the triple fingers crossed emojis <laughs> going. And guess what? You won. Okay, Anna. Uh, this will be on its way to you tomorrow. I'm putting your name right here so we don't forget who's our, who our winner is. This is the lovely number 11 pine. I love it. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous, deep green. So, yay. Good for you. Congratulations. And we'll get that off to you. Thank you so much. And that'll keep the rest of you interested for next week when we have a great trunk show. Helen Solenberger says, congratulations, Anna. And Anna says, what? 
question mark, exclamation point, question mark. I never win anything, exclamation mark. Oh my gosh, triple exclamation point. That's what everybody says the first time they win. Well, now you've won something and that's great. So, Everyone's a winner at Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl. So tune in next Monday for Twisted Stitches. Stop in and see us during Vogue Knitting Live. We live stream right here on Facebook. So you'll get announcements about that as well. And we will see you next week. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope you found our tips useful tonight. Have a great week. Ellen May Potter says, congrats, Anna.